Hey there, Reese from the Point Music Podcast here. Um, we missed a week last week. Reason for it doesn't matter. This week, um, got a very very special guest, and I've known the gentleman for close to a decade now. And he did something very special. Started something very special over the last weekend um, called Start Sequence. Um, you'll learn a little bit more about it in the podcast. It's very interesting. Um, anyway, we'll get straight to the point. Special guest this week is Roland West. Um, you know him from doing the the DJ stuff um, for Full Moon Dance and his own stuff with Bump Nights. But he's also very very uh, intelligent man when it comes to event organizing and um, just music production. Um, well, the ways around it. He's not a producer himself. He'll actually explain that. Anyway, straight to it. Is Roland West. And here we go, Mr. West. How are you, my friend? It's been a long time. I'm good, man. Yeah, I think, it has. I think been, last time we ages. chatted was Horizon Fest? Yeah, I think so. And that was just and I reckon, briefly. Yeah, that was... This is the thing, man. I reckon this is probably... Hopefully, this is the longest we've actually chatted. You and I talk a lot, but in very, very small... We're very, very seconds. busy we, people. We, we get like... Yeah, we get like exactly a minute and a half... Mm. I reckon, you mm. know, just to sort of go through two or three things, and then it's like yeah. it's kind of like like so, um, being like one of those dogs that gets distracted by squirrels though at the same time. Both me and you, like all of a sudden there's something else going on. Oh, squirrel! Shit! Yep. Yeah, yeah. Something else. Squirrel. Got, got to go. Man, you're you're in, de- just you're in demand, squirrels. and I get asked questions all the time, sort of stuff too. So that's 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 the thing. But <laughs> this is actually cool. We actually get to have. I get you for forty five minutes. Yeah, man. To myself. Saucy. I love it. This is saucy. All, all you, baby. Ooh, it's all yeah. you, baby. Um. <laughs> so. I'm going to cut straight to the chase. Oops, and I nearly spilled my whiskey. I don't want to do that on Tuesday night. Not no, yet. Not on Tuesday. Not yet. Um, the start <laughs> sequencing workshop thing you did over the weekend. Like, yeah, that was kind of under the cover a little bit. Um, I knew about it only because I think, who was it? Was it Oz or Jay Bischoff? They might have one of those two shared it. And then I went, oh, shit, I should be onto this. So when yeah. I explain it. Well, it, there was a reason why, like just to on that first, the, the reason it was down on the down low mm. is because, I mean, I, I, I particularly was kind of thinking if, if, if we went massive on it, if we actually just released the whole concept and went, yeah, we're going to take this thing out as a big project and get everyone involved, you know, I've just put him to bed. i got a nine-month-old. I'm like, not a lot of time. No. Not a lot of time being daddy, daddy at home at the moment. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> so I was like, it's like, it's like I, I was looking down the barrel of possibly having a lot of lot, lots of admin time that, mm. I, that I wasn't going to recover. So I went, let's keep it on the down low and let's just see what happens organically um, when we just put it out to basically like a smaller network locally and just see what happens. So it was pretty much 100% organic, you know what I mean? We weren't okay. sort of – the idea was that we didn't want to treat it like some big thing and just go – before we knew it, really what it was. It's just a concept, you know, it's just yeah. an idea. Um, and, I mean, it started because we have these monthly meetups at the, um, the hub in, Prig- in uh, Prigion there, yep. the digital hub. Which is just an awesome spot. Um, most of the time, it's full of, of like you know, genius coders and people, billionaires doing billionaires in t-shirts. Um, <laughs> They're the best type. Taking piss out of them. <laughs> no, it's, it's just, like it's it's full of like um, you know, really really awesome people in in, um, in tech and, and yeah. IT, like real really sort of entrepreneurial people. And then on, it sits it sits uh it sits dormant on the weekend, really. There's not a lot going on on the weekend, mm. um, and so we thought, well, let's maybe utilise it with a bit of a, a bit of an incubator. Um, so the idea was, what's what's usually missing if you're in a band? You'd know this if you're in a band or you play you play instruments. You've come through maybe say somebody who's come through school and play instruments. Mm. Um, you might not have had a heap of time in studios doing session work, diving into synths, recording, yep. playing with playing with digital audio workstations, playing with Basically, anything that's electronic or, or you know, or, or essentially digitally based, mm-hmm. um, you're playing hands-on instruments, and then likewise, you've got people who come through through loving electronic stuff and loving what they hear electronically. That's basically more than half of the music's been coming out for years. Yeah. Um, and it's sort of gradually shifting to the fact that most music has has a has a has a bit of everything. Yeah. So you've got producers and essentially really good arrangers and programmers who, who, who are playing in a in the digital world making stuff and you've got people that are working hands-on with instruments and voice and anything that makes a noise in the real world mm. and they often sit they often sit sort of apart from each other um, and so this is basically to sort of smash them together awkwardly albeit mm. um, 
because we chose the we chose the partners between performers and producers um, essentially randomly. We just picked the names out of a hat. Oh, okay. Yeah, so <laughs> which was kind of the coolest part about it. Yeah. Um, we we whittled a number of appl- a big chunk of applications, almost more than we could could really handle because it was quite a lot of applicants for it. Um, down to our twelve, um, because we were we were limited operationally by how many spaces we had. Mm. Um, we had really a, a maximum of six. We could we could pull off six makeshift studios in this in the hub um, over that weekend. We had a, sort of enough gear that we could make that happen and yeah. the, the architecture allowed for that so that was our, our limit both in sort of staffing hands-on and the space was six um six applicants uh, sorry six pairs of applicants yeah. all up so 12 individuals plus you had mentors um, too so, right? yeah and on top of that were four mentors and my team who who put the thing together um so get, giving us about 20 people all up and that yeah. and this is the thing. COVID was was the, another limiting factor in yeah. if we could realistically do this. I mean, we came up with the, we sat down and nutted out how this was going to work. Only three weeks before the weekend, you know, so it came together pretty quickly mm. um, as a prototype. So, um, yeah, I mean, it was outcomes wise, it was just phenomenal. What what came of it? I well, mean, that's we what I was told to, because yeah. I, I had a good chat, well, quick chat via text via, with with Asher. So. Um, he really enjoyed it, man. He yeah. really did. Um, he, I'm passing on secondhand information here. I mean, if you really want the full full result, you ask him, basically. <laughs> but w- from what I understand of it, he was wanting to learn a few aspects that he did not quite know about. And he actually said he was overwhelmed with the information that he got. Now, he paired with Shay Jackson, right? Which is AKA Beverly Thrills and that sort of stuff. But she's, yeah. she's an amazing sort of DJ and producer and, and singer. Incredible singer. Yeah. Own, right? um, yeah. And he, it, yeah, he's he got the things he wanted out of it. So that was really encouraging to know that there's, well, one, you had caliber artists in there, but still they're artists that you wouldn't expect to be uncertain about certain things and but apparently they are yeah and i think that's where a weekend like the start sequence show like it was it's a great revealer of that kind of stuff mm. the, the the perfect thing about it is though that we we were looking at it like no one's come to it with any judgment or preconceived ideas of what they were going to do yeah we just wanted everybody to really try and give it that it's that old cliche. So you get out of it what you put into it, and everybody just put in. You know, they there were some challenges, um, not so much um, musically, but I think a lot of the because the pairings were random. What you had is you had some of the some of the um, producers and performers that were paired. They they might match sonically, but not like sort of philosophically. Maybe mm. in their process, like their arranging process might yeah, be different. structure. Yeah. Yeah, and some of them, I think for some of them, it's a collaboration. Mm. A lot of artists just don't, we don't get chances to collaborate. We don't, some of us aren't good at sharing. Some of us aren't really good at like reaching out for ideas or, you know, being vulnerable to, to overreaching and mucking something up or, you know. So it was a really great two days because it was it was a whole lot of really talented people who really opened themselves up to like trying weird and wonderful shit that they would never have tried, you know, which was just, it was just great to see, and that shows in the tunes. Like the finished tracks, are just it's just it's just amazing what they what they've done in two days, like two sh- short days too. So are you putting this you into know, a compilation were, then? If, if and yeah, 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 right now. So one of our mentors was you, you'd notice Paulie Bromley, yeah. Mr. Mr. Lord Paulie Tanuki he. himself was yeah, yeah. was um was was just a massive help, just the the the, the um the guru really mm. um just 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 really just fixing everybody's when, when people sort of hit a bit of a stoppage and just couldn't get a bit of flow, something was a bit stuck. Paulie was Paulie was great. Um, as you know, he's sort of one of the mentors. Scotty French was another one. Oh, um, well, yeah. And Stefan came up from Brisbane. He's a mastering engineer. He's just phenomenal. And um, yeah, look, Mark and Mark Maxwell, who's my partner, one of my partners on the project, and he's just a phenomenal Ableton head and just another great sort of master on the fly. Just really good ears, just good knowledge uh, across. So across everything did any audio. did any of the participants actually have to have working knowledge of a, of a door before they go into this? Yeah, so basically we 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 ensured that the six uh, the six that we chose as producers were at least apt in their own comfortable scenario. So we, we basically put it to the to the applicants if you were to work on as part of, it was part of the application process we said, mm-hmm. you know, if you if you've got a if you've got a door that you want to work on um, 
you know, do, do you, would you like to let us know what it is? Um, it, we very quickly figured out that it would have been it's a much easier scenario to park everything from the mix bus onwards. So we, we parked studio monitors and various monitoring sort of environments. And we had a whole bunch of essentially like higher gear, just borrow gear, loan gear mm -hmm. in terms of backline, backline controllers, and microphone stock, DIs, the whole lot. So we had heaps of gear like that. But but each producer came in with basically their own laptop or desktop, or whatever they preferred to. Um, and basically, it's plugged in, and away they went. So the beauty of it is that it was part part home studio, part on site studio. Okay. So we, we tried to make it as, as easy as we could for the producers to move as quickly as they could within their own mm. workspace. Um, but conversely, we we tried to ensure that that the project was started from the ground up. Mm. So it was you know th there were certain you know if people had you know presets and drum pack drum packs and particular stuff that they worked on, they, they want that's fine. But we didn't want anybody to sort of open a half a half finished project yeah, and yeah. just get somebody to sing some vox over it. We really wanted it to be you Stuff know from scratch. Um, fresh fresh yeah. That's a lot and of effort to go into it because I mean like because I've. I don't know if you realize, but well, I've delved into the world of producing myself, right? So I'm doing all yes. Mules' stuff, and wow. It, it, <laughs> I mean, I've been playing music for 25 years, but producing is a totally different thing. So um, it's it's totally it's so true, man. It, it's it is a um it's a, it can be a it can be a massive thief of time. You know, if, like you, you've got to be careful. I, I only dive in and out of it too. Mm -hmm. Like I'm I'm a pretty ordinary producer. You know, I mean, I've put together some tracks over the years. But nothing's really. There's nothing I'm that proud of. You know what I mean? I just, just it's kind of more just. It's been auxiliary to DJing for me. Yeah. It's it, you know. So, I'm I'm 95 of my work is playing other people's music, whether that's you know through programming or DJing or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it doesn't. It's it's not my own work. For that reason, I've I haven't done all that work bouncing in it. Like, I haven't gone deep, deep, deep in a, in digital audio yet. And it's yeah, hats off to those that do because it's just it's just huge amounts of work and and it's one of those things that only shows that you only see the outcomes like 90 percent of the way through oh you know? yeah so you, you, you start seeing it 50 percent finished when you when you're actually 90 percent of the way through the work and that goes for whether you're learning it whether you're trying to finish off a track mastering whatever mm. you know what i mean like it, it's that that old chestnut this, it's, it's frustrating this whole <laughs> the whole process myself like firstly I actually got a little bit confused with the whole process that you were putting out there. So I actually thought it was just for singer songwriters, and that was it. Yeah. So language is a big part of this about what makes it difficult. Yeah. Language, and this is one of the things that came up, just in the sort of various round little little chats we were all having, and it's just the term producer is one that's it's it's got it's very vertical. Mm. Like it, it, you know, there's there's an executive level to it yep. like where you, where you where you just you're just bankrolling something yep. or you're putting your name to it yep. and you're not actually having anything to do with the project and this goes for everything from music film and tv to the whole lot like yep. it, and then you and then you've got actual producer like project manager producer yep. and then you've got yeah studio sort of essentially what, what Paulie B is, is, is known for is mm -hmm. and he, he describes himself he's a producer yep. but he's predominantly a recording engineer yeah, and yeah. a ranger um, and then you've got your sort of your bedroom Bedroom types is you know everyone's knocking around on Ableton now. See that's the thing you can put your hand up and say producer. The fuck does that mean? Is that because because a lot of people who are solo singer songwriters are still producing a lot of their own work? Oh so, shit, yeah. So I, that's why. So I got things lost. wide open. Yeah, because mm. I I don't identify as a singer songwriter, but I would I think I would have benefited from doing this thing. Absolutely, yeah. So yeah, you, yeah. you would you you would have yeah yeah. So damn it, I missed that bus. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, that, that's the thing, mate. It's not. This was just a. This was just a crack, mm. you know. We just went, let's just do it. We just did this one. Was um, this funded we did it, in we any did way? It. Yeah, it was. It was Radif. Radif kicked in some money to get it going. Right. Um, it, look, it wouldn't have been possible. Mainly, like between Bridge and Digital Hub. Yep. So Chris on there, yep. who was just has been so massively supportive of everything that's coming through that place in terms of its creative startups. You know, there's the there is the um the Sunshine Coast Producers Group that I mentioned, it's a monthly meetup mm -hmm. essentially of, of, yeah, of, let's call it for lack of a better word, yeah, electronic music producers. So you, you're actually, you're, it, it starts with that. Now it branches out into others, but that's really what it's, mm. what it's core is. It's, it's those who want to dive into getting really good, making really good dance music. This is how we do it. Um, it's got a number of other things that are bouncing in and out of that, out of that, um, that collab space in, in the hub there. And it's, um, it's just, they've been so supportive. None of this would have been possible without that. And then of course with Radoff and Noosa Council, you know, it's a good agile council. It's, it's like, um, 
It's the thing about getting a good council. Um, they can they can make things move. They can put money into effective things that that, that are going to actually yield results. And things like this weekend is just a massive multiplier um, for for everybody that was involved. Is and and I, I guess I've got to, I've got to point out it was not easy. You know, a lot of I think a lot of people may have been worried. I mean, I'm sure you would have benefited from it, but it was also and I'm sure Ash told you. It was fucking grueling. Man. Yeah, no, he like, told me it, it was, <laughs> his head was a mess when he came home. Basically, after yeah. he was tired. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we 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 inevitably, inadvertently rather, created a situation where people really did push themselves. We 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 kept it sort of casual, but the fact that there were prizes involved, you know, that it were worth a bit of money. I mean, mm. we had we had two two hundred dollar vouchers for for music at Noosa for the um for the third for the fir- third uh, place song and um. Two um two hundred dollar vouchers, so one each for the for the for the winning pair, um for store DJ for the second place, and the winners um the the the, the winning songwriters who were, which were um uh, Gabrielle and uh, Alicia Todd, Todd. Uh, that, that that pairing um those those girls just put together just a an amazing tune um got actually got a whole lot of us in there singing oh, chorus nice. stuff with them which is great yeah yeah and they took home. They, they, they for their for their work, you know, for for taking out the top spot. Not that that's the most important bit. For taking out that that winning track for the weekend, um, they get the full day in the studio at Yamanui at, oh, um, at Paulie B's studio. Yeah. So you know that's you know that's that's a lot of money <laughs> worth of uh, worth of studio time. I know. With the with the master <laughs> board, um, well aware. Yeah, yeah, and Paulie's Paulie also generously donated his time to master to to master all the um. Every, every every finished track once once the pairs uh, are once that once each of the six applicant pairs are happy with their tracks yep. he'll be he'll be pulling them into mastering them um, for a release oh, so they can, uh, you know, so they can in, over the coming weeks so they continue to work yeah. on them after after this process yeah yeah okay. look that's the thing it's all, it's all their music um it's 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 wholly and severally owned by the artists as 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 a as a concept we, we're not carrying anything no proprietary for us it's it's the actual um, the program is but it's 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 all the artists' work, mm. so it's all it's all theirs to do with what what they'd like. Um, we 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 obviously would love to see it um, carried forth. I'd love to see them collaborating further together. You know, I think some of the some of the pairings worked really really well. I mean, obviously Asher and Shay together, were, were, they were those were like those guys were like just two peas in a pod. They yeah. just had so much fun with it. Yeah, that is. I mean, I hopefully hopefully they could do something together. As a duo, you know, I could I could see him doing something cool on stage. Well, I know I know that he's doing yeah. his own album at the moment. I know that. Yeah. I've been um, spoil alert if people didn't realize that, but yeah, he is. Because um, <clears throat> I've talked to him in parts about it, but he's not really ready to really uh, let it loose yeah. per se. But I think something being participating in this in this event on the weekend, I think that would have really pushed him further, and 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 particularly in it's not in confidence because I don't think Asher lacks a confidence. Man, he's he's. He's super talented. I've got a lot of respect for the guy. I mean, I, I'm in a band with him. I should have a lot of respect for the dude. <laughs> um, but I think it just it when in the production realm, as you're saying, like you don't you don't really delve into it that much. It fucks with your self esteem because oh yeah, you get to this point where he's going, yeah yeah, I've got I've got I've got these levels and the balance is just right and this tone here is just yeah and this part here is just ah oh. and then. You bounce it down, and you have listened to another set of headphones or another stereo, and you just go, "What the fuck is this?" <laughs> yeah, like, it happens to me every day, and that's yeah. It's... Yeah, yeah. I, it's 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 mastering, man. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's fucking. This is yeah. This is why I like limit myself. Like, I I used to do a lot of like live set. Like I'd play live techno with you know sort of more than like sixteen channels in Ableton and this art and more live instruments and stuff. And it, it gets hard because what you put together at home just through a couple of two way boxes mm. that mi- might mimic how your PA might sound when you get to a show is totally different. Oh, yeah. And it's why people, it's why people you push yourself to have, you know, a, a mastering engineer for anything you record and, 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 a, and, a, and a front of house person mm. actually tours with you. Cause it does, it gets to the point where you just don't know. And even just, yeah, <laughs> Yeah, the mix it does it does fuck with your self esteem because it it seems like other people just nail it like you know, you know it's it's like it's, 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 it's you a, listen to someone that's like, how did you get there that's so quickly yeah it's like <laughs> it's, I know what you mean I spend like two two days solid on one track and I get it to like it's here. freakish though it's, it's like, like oh. seeing people pick up like an instrument or 
some people some can can paint or draw manga or something like that and you just go how how sure. like i've been trying to do this for so long now how the hell did you just like get in it if it's some people it just clicks yeah frustrating as it seems it, but it does it, yeah it does i mean yeah you can't you can't beat yourself up with that shit like that'll that's like what is it? Comparison is the death. Of oh art. yeah, no, it's the I've, death of creativity. I've like, had to learn to let that go with my stuff, man. Yeah, yeah. I've had people crit- criticize, and some people say good things, and some people go, oh, "You should have done this." You know, like, yeah, should have. Fucking didn't. It's out there now. My, 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 my thing's always been um, open it up, and I don't naturally do that. You know what I mean? I'm a, I'm a natural control freak. Like I, I try and I tend to micromanage. I tend to hold a lot of projects. Mm. You know, personally, like I try and sort of. Like, nah, this is how I wanted to go, and I don't actually ask for help or like reach out to people because because of that. Yeah, it's that worry of like, if I if I I don't want them to make me feel like I'm not like I suck at yeah. that part of that. Yeah, because it sucks. Yeah. <laughs> but it's really it's so beneficial once you can smash through that barrier. You go, oh, that asking for a bit of help is like, oh, it's funny. So I've st- I've started doing that. Like I, I started putting feels out to like like either like someone like like Brian Goodworth, you know like. Yeah, dude's got a great year. He produced Mules' first stuff and work with Barefoot, and and he's I, I respect him as an engineer, like both behind the desk at a gig as well as behind the desk in the studio. And if he says it sucks, and then I'm like, all right, well I'll go back to it. But if it, 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 I guarantee you won't, he'll he'll, <laughs> he'll actually say, look, that sounds pretty good. I would have done this or that. But same as like, uh, well, you sent to Paulie. I wouldn't bother Paulie B with it, but I have talked to him before when we were in the studio with, with Barefoot mentioning stuff that I've been trying to pick up and he'd go, oh yeah, try this. And I'm like, oh yeah, cool. I'll take that home. Try it. Yeah. It works. Yeah. All right, cool. Industry <laughs> industry knowledge, it helps. Yeah, yeah. I think just keep, just keep bouncing stuff. Like just handballing something to someone and being vulnerable mm. is, is the first bit. It's like do it a number of times and something will stick. You know, like there'll be a bit. You'll get a bit of feedback on this bit, bit of feedback on that bit, or this bit or that bit. Of it. It's it, it's all it's all data. It, you know what I mean? It's all it's all. Some of it's good data. Some of it's bad data. Yeah. I mean, the 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 good thing is getting feedback that's that's critical, but it's positive. You know, like because let's face it. I mean, negative. Like if somebody's just going to rip rip something apart, and go, that sucks. It's like, well, why does it suck? That does. If, yeah. If, give, if, you, if they can talk, give you reason it, you know, for it. Yeah, and it's like I think having being able to hear that something shit and strike it quickly and move on to something that that's gonna that's gonna work better for yeah. what you're working on. Yeah. I think that's a really that's a really um that's a really important thing to have. You know, is mm. just kill it, move on, kill it, move on. Um, yeah, it's funny. Paulie, speaking of Paulie, um, I just spent the weekend with him, and you know, he's, he's, the guy is just dude's a fucking genius. wizard, so man. It's like, <laughs> so it's just like, yeah. And, if, and we're talking about that. It's like I, I've always been a big fan of like, like less is more. I try and limit when I'm writing stuff. I'll try and limit track not like a lot. Try and limit track count. And go okay. And then he, he he talks about how they they often try and do an, if it's an album in a day kind of uh, you know test where you just smash something out. Run seven tracks. Imagine you're on an eight track recorder. Yeah. Like limit yourself the way the way everyone was limited. From you know, from the dawn of time up to like 1988. Yeah. You know, when it went to 16, and then you know what I mean. Like, so imagine, imagine this is what this is what studio recording was like. So yep. before it was on, before you went into the the main studio and laid everything down here and and and, and piped everything through all the processing and started duplicating tracks out, and it, you 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 had to record in this amount of space, mm. this amount of virtual space. It's a it's a good challenge to sometimes really hyper limit stuff, um, you know. And he was saying when he's when he when he bounces something out, it's like he'll sometimes just go mute 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 and mute two thirds of the shit that's in there. Yeah. And just go, oh, that's better. You know what I mean? So it's like so easy to overthink shit. This is the, it's one of the one of the terrible things of digital workstations. Because you can keep adding, endless. adding, you can just adding. keep adding, adding, adding bloody yeah. channels. Like it's yep. just. You can and, and then it's oh I'm out of processing power. Oh, I better buy a bigger bloody Mac. Let's, let's <laughs> throw some more money at Steve Jobs. Jobs is ghost and let's you know like <laughs> you can just keep adding and adding. The, the crucial thing to do is to is to reduce. I reckon. That's yeah. Well, I mean, uh, because I I play in a, in a band, it's basically a three piece, but technically like a bass playing guitar and bass at the same time. Mm. I have to try and thicken it out in other ways. 
So I, I'll yeah. either double up the guitar tracks a bit more and thicken it out that way, or we'll add in, like, we do add Sith elements in, into songs as well. So mm. I can understand Paulie's, like, um, point of view with that and perspective and aim. But at the same time, though, when you're limited to how many people in there to make a noise to make it as competitive and as oh, the yeah. bigger bands, you kind of need to add these extra elements in there. But I don't like those elements taking over everything. So I mm. usually have them sort of sitting under layers and just they're there if you listen to it. But if you don't listen to it, you, they're still there filling out, but they're not taking over the main core of the actual sound, which would be drums, mm. bass and vocals. Yeah. So that that'd be true. Yeah. But that's that's how what I've figured out in my little journey anyway. Yeah, it's it's that challenge, isn't it, between between being able to deliver live as as a two piece. Well, I guess it's the it's it's kind of like the black the black uh, the black keys challenge too mm-hmm. with Dan and what's his other, what's his what's his uh, the other Pat. guy Pat Dan and Pat. It's like it used to be the two of them. Mm-hmm. It literally just wasn't it. It was yeah. like. 90s it was just I remember when I I think the first the first I picked up um, Thick Freakness I think I, just, I was amazed that it was just a two piece mm. I was like and it actually it, that album was just but that was very piece. yeah very lo-fi it was, it was only when yeah, they, yeah yeah it's only when they but went they, into they the kind brothers of went album from lo-fi. yeah yeah but it, but it went lo-fi it moved horizontally into that fullness almost imperceptibly didn't it yeah it was, yeah it still sat front and center was this just this just chunky neo blues kind of thick shit, and it just nicely just kit kit that just sat there in the pocket, like it was solid. Mm. Yeah, and, then, and I guess it, it, it's, it's, it's easy enough for them, but they can still. I guess when you're that massive and you do have just guys sitting in the wings, running monitors and track and everything else, and it's just you've got a. Well, army, I, I think they do yeah. tour with a bass player now. When when they actually do. Well, play. I think I think. I, I think that isn't it. They they run it. Isn't it even more now? Do they actually run? I thought they actually that, run with like a yeah, a, that a, a keys player and, and that sort of stuff too. Yeah, so I'm probably like, like I'm probably I'm probably talking out of school and totally haven't seen them live. I haven't seen them live in a very long time either, man. So. <laughs> but as far as that was like, I did watch a um one of those fucking premier guitar show us your rig fucking things. Yeah, and they were talking about. Um, the other parts, the elements of the band that were playing at the same time. So, because you know Dan, yeah. you would know that Dan would use an octaver as well, like a yeah something to fill out his guitar tone. But there's no way. There's certain lines there. There's definitely there's a bass player there. Yeah, and that's it. Keys yeah. There's only like so that. much you can do with an octaver. Yeah. I mean, he'd start with the octaver, and then he'd add. There's probably like you know, remember the Edge famously used to come out with the, the fucking pedal board, like <laughs> just. It's just unrecognizable. So, like you could you could pull out the the guitars for like halfway yeah. through, you can break the signal and just feed a feed like a, a sine wave into it, and it'd still give you the same <laughs> give you the same tone. Yeah. Like so, it's definitely running with that sort of setup because it's such a it's pro, it's like processed but so polished, you know, mm. in its dirtiness, you know, that sound like I fucking love it. But yeah, man, production. Think how think how long they've had to sit on that. To yeah. sit on that sound. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like fucking a year yeah. just on an E and just how's that <laughs> sit? You know just, it drives yeah. a sane man mad, man. That that sort yeah. of shit. And that's why it's that's why it's probably it's not Dan, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's it's not. It's it's like it's 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 not. And I think that's going back to what we're talking about with SART sequencing, it's collabs, man. Yep. It's about finding finding people who have this unique little knowledge pocket and just letting them letting them own that and go thank you for your fucking assistance on this I need you to just help us with this bit mm. and they'll just they'll just own it and then cuz the, people were bouncing through the rooms so it was great to see people they weren't just sitting in their pairs they were like checking in on each other how are you going with that like they they, they somebody laid down some vocals for someone else somebody gave some guitar to someone else and it was just there was a heap of knowledge sharing cuz no one was precious you know what I mean yeah. about about their proprietary brain. They were like, "No, nah, I'm here to absorb, not contain." Because it's not. It wasn't part of their livelihood or earnings for that particular thing, man. Sometimes people get a bit precious about that. But if it's something as a collaboration or a project, they'd be willing to share. Yeah, yeah. It's a yeah. different mindset. But I guess it's 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 kind of like um, yeah. But it's 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 funny how even COVID's made everyone a bit crazier. And, <laughs> but it was it was hard enough, you know, <laughs> this time last year. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's. It, Sadly, the the music industry is never one that's 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 it's um it's full of the most generous people, in I, I I've ever known, you know. But it's equally the the slimmest because if you do want if you do really need to hustle, mm-hmm. you're forced to fucking hustle. 
really it's a, yeah oh there's still plenty um, of sharks and that's why people yeah yeah there are and it's like but i, I was so glad to see no sharks man this weekend he wouldn't see him at that level oh the sharks yeah. that i've encountered have always been the um uh, outside the creative realm and in in the other the other side of the music industry, the other the, the other side, yeah, yeah. But we won't get into that. They'll get me into trouble. <laughs> um, oh, man. Not, not all bookers are bad. No, I'm not talking about used, bookers either. No, no, I'm talking about other members of the, of the yeah, other sides. Um, <laughs> now this whole fucking stupid COVID situation, which is making things now it's illegal to dance apparently. So we're living, oh. we're living footloose in 2020, um, pretty much. Where's Kevin Bacon when we need him? Um, I was reminiscing about Junction Alley, like oh. uh, when I when I when I put the feels out to you and 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 said you want to do this, and then I went fuck, Junction Alley, man. When are we yeah, gonna see, when are we gonna see something like that <laughs> yeah. again? It feels good, like we're not going to be question. able to see anything until a, a good a good yeah. year. It does feel like that. You know, it's it's it certainly feels like there's not a lot of light. It's a long tunnel. Yep. And it feels like it just keeps every time you think you, you might be close to the end, just looking at the map, there should be ten k's of tunnel left. Fuck the light. You just go. There's this tunnel's only ten k's long. And then suddenly you, the, they go, no, this is the new map, and it's fucking 50 kilometers <laughs> long, and you go, okay, we didn't pack enough food or water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who do yeah, we, who I, do we eat know, now? <laughs> I think I think it's a – okay, so I'm in a weird spot because I've, I've – I'm no, you know, because I'm no longer involved with Venue 114 or mm-hmm. any of the council venues or programming, I'm, yeah. I'm kind of – I'm being stay-at-home dad, and I'm playing with my nine-year-old, uh, nine-month-old son, rather playing instruments with him and going, I wonder what the future holds and literally not giving a fuck, like giving a massive fuck, but not at the same time. Yeah. So I'm not looking at the future with any urgency um, because it's all just, it's, we've, we've lost our point of reference. Mm-hmm. It's like someone's turned off the gravity, you know, the gravity generator and we're all floating and it's like, we're just waiting to kind of we're waiting till, till we feel that something's pulling us back down to earth. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's it is really really good to hear that the pineapple's kicking off in November though. That is that is definitely, um, I think that is a bit of a a bit of a phoenix moment. How are they going to um, do it though? That's this is the question. That because I because you you can cut okay. There's there's a number of events around the same time that are that are moving forward because we're going to have we're gonna we're gonna be at a point where the traceability um, well for starters. You know, you, you're not going to see that border open close. It, this will be predominant. This will be Queensland people. Yeah. Coming to it'll be Queensland only. Yep. Coming to the Pineapple Fest, and it will likely be Queensland or at least Australian only artists. Mm. You know, at a at a minimum, which I think is fucking awesome. Actually. Yeah. No, this has this um, whole thing's been a win for basically local and Australian artists. So like, it, it really yeah. has. There's so much. Um. Yeah. There's the thing we've got to realise is as things get better towards October, there is going to be a market. There's there's already a market. The product, like when I say product, I mean performance music. Mm. People want to see shows. Uh, you've got people who who are willing to put their hard earned into buying tickets to shows, not to the same capacity they might have this time last year, but no. they still they still want to do it. And then you've got the, clearly we've got the, the talent. We've got the talent in the country right now. We don't. It'd be great to bring in the internationals, but we can we can do without the internationals for 12, 18 months. We really can. The beauty about the internet is that everybody can see everyone else's shit anyway. Yeah. So it doesn't necessarily have to be somebody somebody fronting up two and a half million bucks to pay for you know fifty thousand kilometers of fencing, a humongous line array, and a humongous insurance policy to put fifteen twenty thousand people in front of fucking anyone, you know, overseas. Just do it, do it, do it at a quarter of the scale. And do it with Australians. Mm. It's that simple, and we we can because up to, you know I think you've got up to ten thousand. They just all they need to do is have a proper COVID safe plan. The beauty about ticketing these days is everybody's name number. If, so if we all actually tracing. Get, if we all get if we all just get out get off our asses and realise that this this isn't big government. Oh, I don't want people to see where I am. Oh, fucking hell! Every comp every company you've ever bought something from sees where you are all the time. You know, we don't give a shit when the ads work and they tell us what we want. We only give a shit when it's apparently the government. It's like, just stop. If we can all stop doing that and we can all be okay with just 
being sensible about how to manage this shit, we can all get back to normal. So they should still have a stall at, at Piney for couture tin foil hats, just in case people... I think they're, they're, they are the one stall that's going to sell more than they yes. did this one last year. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to coin that. I'm going <laughs> to... <laughs> Hit up Pico and get a stall in there yeah. and start making my, my fucking hats and make a bit of coin out of the situation. Because yeah, I was I was actually concerned about that because because Caloundra tried tried they tried so hard to stick in there and they basically just had to concede yeah. defeat and I felt for him. Um, yeah. I really did. Same as Woodford. Wood, Wood the Woodford one sucked. Um, yeah, Woodford's a, Woodford's a different one. That's 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 a that's a hard one. I mean, yeah. I could I couldn't see how that was going to work at all because the, basically it becomes a town for that. Literally, it becomes a, it, big enough to have its own postcode for those seven days. I think days. it's uh, yeah. Sadly, Woodford scale is what is yep. what um ultimately brought it down. Yeah. The the fact that it runs day tickets over seven days and weekend tickets and three days and five days and I mean you'd have to add Bill would have to add four people alone like working. 50, 60 hours a week between now and then and for the three months after the festival just to handle the data wrangling yep. of who's moving in and out. And the like, tracing. Once again, this is this is where this is where big data is your friend. This is where track and trace. I think Big Sound last year I um I, I, I got hold of some software that was essentially I was talk, talking to the guy who developed it and I'm, and I'm he's, if if he ever comes across this podcast he's gonna hate me for completely forgetting his name, but it had a really great chat. This guy had some software that, that had been developed for Glastonbury and Edinburgh and stuff, and it was essentially um, it was essentially heat mapping for, for, for human movement uh, throughout sites to, to basically look at um, where people were moving between stages. It looked at individual moving data points, all of it blind, as in it doesn't know you individually. It just simply goes, um, you know, you're, you've moved from here to here to here. It's so kind know, of like predator view. A, a festival. <laughs> kind of, but it's just, it all just blurs together into a heat map, yep. you know. So the idea, the idea being that, it, that, that, if, that the festival organising team can look at, you know, how forty thousand people are moving through a site where the bottlenecks are, mm. where they need to send extra extra um, security and just and essentially just event staff to, 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 to make sure everything's working okay. You never think um, that you need a data analysis to be working on a, on a music festival when it comes to that sort of stuff, nah. but that would make sense. It's, no, and it's been it's been happening for years. So you've got some clever people that are already developing it. So it's like it's just it's only a matter of time before this stuff can roll out. I mean, it's wow. easy to overlay like a, essentially overlay COVID plans in terms of social distancing. Even if you just had to keep the one point five, you could still overlay scales in which you can look at a site and go, all right, we would have done fifteen thousand, but we can do seven thousand, and we can be insured fully to seven thousand. Right. So there's your there's your capacity number. Mm. You work backwards from that. And rejig your programming dollars, rejig your operational costs, and, your, and all the rest. It's tough, but like, I'm I'm glad people are having a crack at it. Um, you know, shit, that I might have a crack at it because, as you said, Junction Alley, Junction Alley ain't dead. That's just sitting there. That's just dormant. Do bring it back because that thing yeah, was fucking yeah. wicked. Yeah, it was a good gig. Yeah, it was a nice capacity too. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it wasn't overwhelming. That's what I liked about it, man. Because yeah. um, fifteen hundred is a good number. Like a yeah. thousand. To 1500 yeah. is like a, a, to me that's and that's with like with um with the with the Fortitude Music Hall and stuff coming out that that's where I mean they're obviously much bigger it's two and a half thousand but yeah. there's something about a big music venue like a and I, and I mean like a small festival but if it was a festival really tiny but as a music as a venue mm. I love that scale I love I love watching a, a, a great concert with two thousand odd other people there's something magic about that oh yeah it's great that's a great scale yeah, it's, it's that's a number I reckon we should be sitting at. Yeah, it's not overwhelming. I think it's it's the kind of new scale that we're going to have to start enjoying stages at, even festival stages. So pineapples cap. I mean, I don't know. This is a you have to ask Pico this one. I don't know what the numbers are that they're looking at, but it would be much less than you know at least since I was involved years ago. It's it'll be it'll be probably back to those earlier numbers. You know what I mean? It'll oh, without a doubt. Tiny. Yeah, because because you'd have to keep it. You still have to have that <laughs> spacing. Yeah. Yeah, but I I, I don't think they're going to have to have the spacing. To the to the extent that we've had to, because see if, if we can keep on top of this by November, you got to understand Queensland. We've had so few cases yeah. for for so long. I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to this. No, we've got to close <laughs> the border now. <laughs> anyway, <Scomo. laughs> well, it's like it's, it, that's it. What more can you do? The border, border's closed. It, it sucks for a whole lot of reasons and a whole lot of businesses. And I I, I really I feel for the tourists. I feel like I feel for those anybody who need to work nationally. But um, you know, maybe that's what we need. Is the whole country just needs to stop and breathe at a at a at a more local level. Oh fuck, man! Lucky you're for, not for, back for in for Melbourne again. Fuck, man! <laughs> <I'll tell you laughs> what. 
I feel for that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, that's 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 Australia's. I mean, look at this. It's here. I'm, oh, yeah, okay. It's merino, but like it's very thin. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's this is this is winter, guys. <laughs> I mean, I, I felt for, for um, I, now. I felt for airwaves because they had to can the the um that first one on the weekend they had to can the Sunday. The main headline. Oh, did they? Yeah, main headline oh, was what? Pierce Brothers. Oh, what happened? The where rain. Is, was no, it? where do you, where do you fuck this, do you think the Pierce Brothers are from? Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I fell but, but for them. They've done that anyway. How well, they, anyway? they were going to be like, doing. They would have been fine until Melbourne, uh, until Melbourne went yeah, backwards yeah. and they got messed up, man. And it sucked because I think Oka was on that bill as well, and oh, there was someone else. And I can't. So I'm sorry for the act that was on. Else Sunday, was on. Yeah. the Dregs. No, the Dregs headlined the Friday Sunday. night. Friday night. Yeah. yeah. No, they smashed it on the Friday night. Apparently, I mean, I, mm. didn't, I didn't go. Yeah, it's literally, it. it's literally down the awesome. road for me. I could have walked down there and had a listen to it. <laughs> but um. Ah, oh, you're shocker. I, dude, I, I, I'm, my work hasn't stopped. Yeah. So this whole thing. You're one of those. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not. Essential workers. I'm not an essential worker. <laughs> Fuck it. My product is not an essential, but it is a want, <laughs> and people have been wanting it, so they've been doing there you it. Go. Essential. My it's my essential. If, my if job. Anything, these things shown us <laughs> is that like people want shit that yeah. they don't need. Yeah, because they, they get bored. A need. Yeah, they get bored. I need a cubic meter of toilet paper. Now, <laughs> okay, like, yeah. Why do why? you have a, is your is your asshole fucking yay big? Mm. Like why? Because do you use a whole they they they, they, they use wrap a roll around like their hands, fucking... poop in their hands, and then they take that off and then brush it down the toilet. That's a new technique. Imagine if that yeah, they just ride the toilet paper like a simian. You know, like that's how they that's <laughs> that's how somebody else is like I've got so much I don't know what else to do with it. <laughs> It's it's oh. insulation. <laughs> I'm starting a studio. I've heard that toilet paper. It's all the musicians, man. We've been hoarding it. Actually, oh. that was really interesting. This whole thing. When I went in to um, shake it up, um, it was probably sort of peak nasty COVID. Or so what? April, May ish. I yeah. went in there and I was looking at um, studio monitors. And I went in there and I, went, I looked at the, the setup. I, went, I, I asked um, Ryan and Mark, I said, well, are you guys not doing the studio sales thing? And I went, yeah, we just can't get anything to replace the stuff we've sold out of. Everyone, and I went, yeah. oh, everyone's going in and in, in lockdown and, and making their own home studios and creating and then it just caught, caused a shortage because <laughs> all the warehouses couldn't fucking keep up with stuff, you know? It's, yeah, it's insane. I was, I was in the same boat setting up some studio stuff here, and I, I wanted to get a, a curved, I wanted to get a really nice curved, you know, trim 4K monitor. Yep. So I can just, because then you've just got great vision um, set of just working on little on laptop screen and massive TV and shit like that. Mm. Yeah, it's like I think it's back order. I'm looking through, and like 90% of the models are all just, they're just sold out because everyone's just gone, <laughs> set up home. I'm like, cool. So that, yeah, just, turns out our just in time manufacturing system that works around the world. Yeah. Doesn't work. No, they <laughs> just <laughs> can't predict things like this, and then it just the wheels fall off it. You yeah, know, someone goes and eats a bat, gets sick, and then the next thing you know, the whole wheels fall off the whole fucking. Yeah, industry. that's yeah, and that's that's the thing, man. It's like I, mean, it's, I know it's all it's all being talked about by everyone's just been fucking talked to, to death, but it's like fuck, keep it local. We buy tomatoes in coals that have been driven from fucking somewhere else, you know. Whereas I get tomatoes going crazy at the moment in the garden. It's like, if we all did a bit more of that, mm. we wouldn't have to have trucks driving crap around because, you know, I mean, it doesn't work for a fucking computer monitor, no. but you know what I mean? <laughs> Make like, your own computer <laughs> monitor, man. Get some parts for the tip, put it together. No, but things like, you know, it's like 3D printing parts, you know, like like 3D printing, like local local mechanics 3D printing parts instead of instead of needing it to be put in a bag with fucking 10 times as much packaging than the actual part is yep. and being individually flown in from from you know Quang Gong, it's like we don't need that. Yeah. We, we don't. What we need is a three D printer sitting in the corner that makes picks. You know, so when you pick, buddy, when you look, drop your pick on stage, hit print. You've got to print it down by your feet, right? And you print a new pick because that's you know. You just use a card, credit that. card. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but you don't have time to cut up your credit card. No, no, no. Cute. There's there's a whole so bunch of need... thing you can get. <laughs> have you not seen? Ah, oh, yes. I've seen those. I've seen those. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah very nah, cool. fuck your 3D printer thing. No, get the whole punter thing. Just make sure you've got a card that you don't need. Yeah, do the barefoot investor thing. Yeah. Cutting it up, just, just, just punch some pigs. Reuse, out recycle. Oh, 
Yeah, that's right. What a waste of perfectly good credit cards. Well, the didn't uh, I think make, make picks. Brian May, Guitars for Queen, I think he uses a coin and it always has. Yeah, right. That's, that's how he's, it, it, how he gets his unique tone. You can't, you cannot replicate Brian May's tone, no matter how hard you go, because he, he's, his guitar was especially made for him back in the seventies, and oh, I think fuck. he, I think he made it or half helped make it, and he plays with a with a coin. There you go, bit of knowledge you probably did not know, and yeah, probably not going to come to any use. Twang. Oh, it's it's. If you're going to do like a pick slide, that'd have a really different tone. Oh. That'd be some. <laughs> Yeah, I, that's, that's that's some um, that's some proper bloody uh, uh, fucking rage. What, what am I saying? Um, Tom Morello. What's his name? Tom Morello. Morello. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a Morello style mm. oh, sound. That is. Oh yeah. <laughs> that and pulling the, pulling the lead out and do the thing. I've I've tried doing that. It doesn't fucking work for me. <laughs> but maybe just yeah, the old playing the... Yeah. With, the, with the drills. Drills are a good one. Oh yeah. That's, gonna... one, that's one of my faves. Just when you get a Dremel for that. Hmm. Mm. 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 Man, we've hit forty-five minutes. Oh man, how how quick was that? Oh, <laughs> I wonder Joe Rogan goes on for three hours. It's I like, know, it's just I know. Chat, I, I, man. Yeah, it's good chat. Yeah, but people, people's interest wanes uh, after after like fifty minutes or so. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, some people just go tune in and tune out. Whereas I listen to like a Joe Rogan podcast like for a whole week because it's my journey to work and back. Yeah. That's right. it. Me too. Uh, oh, yep. Yeah, all right. This part of the podcast again. Yeah, cool. Well, we're just still talking about this thing. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, we'll wrap this up. Um, yeah. Are we going to see more of these um, start sequence events? Yeah. No, absolutely. The, like 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 this bloke spoke about. It's only it's only a little uh, a little tester. We just dipped a toe. Cool. The response is massive. We obviously got way more applicants that we could we could uh, support and deal with. Um, we're looking at how we might be able to do it for younger people, to do it for older people. It's gonna, we're gonna have more of these. It, we're looking at probably, hopefully, doing something like monthlies between now and Christmas. It's, it's really a COVID. We, mm-hmm. we just want to keep people's, people's brain. I want my musician friends to be thinking about their music while there's no gigs. Oh no, and this a lot of us of, have. This is sort of how we. This is how. This is one way that I thought we could do it. So it's, we're definitely gonna keep doing it. I think there's. I can't speak to it yet. We're obviously we've only just finished on the weekend. Just listen out for the once. I'll I'll, I'll send you the, the list because that once those six tracks are out, it's just it's all killer, man. They're totally different. They're all wildly different to each other, and they're, they're all totally amazing tracks. I mean, um, can we can we pitch like, this to like it, every, fucking well, such as daily doesn't mean shit much anymore because they've gone digital. But so they know that there's more music on the coast rather than just the chats because <laughs> yeah. It gets frustrating. I mean, yeah, go to the chats. Yeah. You've done well yeah. for yourselves, but there's a lot of freaking artists. And, yeah, yeah, man. You and I, I mean, you and I, how long are you and I known each other? 10, 10 odd years? Yeah, plus? I'd say it's like, about 10 years, yeah. Like, it's like a decade, man. There's, there's, there's mountains going on. That's it. And it's it's all at that cool scale. So it's yep. about, you know, it's not at this big scale. It's, it's at this cool scale. And this is hopefully, yeah, we keep it at that cool scale. Just keep it going forward. I think um, I'm pretty positive, man. Between now and the end of the year, I think things are going to start to open up. I think it'd be good to see people at Soul Bar rubbing shoulders again. Well, I've got my you know, first as long, as long as I got my first show on Friday coming up. Ah, uh, yes. And to be cool. honest with you, it's one of the first times I'm kind of nervous. What's what is it about that makes you nervous? Do you think is it the intimacy of the show, the fact that it's yes. kind of minimized? Like yes. The, the, yeah. yeah. Right, I've said this a, a few times to different artists before. I know I said I was wrapping this up, but this is I mean, you've touched on something here that it's um. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> playing in, no, no, playing in front like with barefoot, playing in front of 1, 500, 1,000, 2,000 people, whatever it is, which we've played to several times. It's a walk in the fucking park. It really is. Mm. I don't get nervous about that shit. I get on their stage. I enjoy myself. I get on there and have fun with my brothers and walk off stage and go, man, that was killer. Not nervous. Playing with this band in front of like 50, 100 people. My God. It, mm. it is nerve wracking. Whereas I do it with mules, I don't think twice about it because we're used to playing to like 10, 20, 50, 100 mm. people max because mm. it's a different type mm. of clientele and a different type of music. Mm. But mm. I, yeah, I, I don't think I've been this nervous about a gig in a long time. Yeah. It's hard, man. Mm. I mean, I know my parts. <laughs> I should fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's. Maybe it's that thing about like visualizing instead of visualizing the audience naked, just visualize an audience. I think it's because they're <laughs> going to be mainly sitting down. Yeah, 
the not being able to move thing. That's crippling, isn't it? Like the feed, that so the negative up. feedback of, of how that sets the tone. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, I really did feel like as 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 the the the, the regulation ummed and art about whether your butt was allowed to leave a seat or whether your feet were allowed to tap. Uh, Yet, you know, apparently we can all go to the brothel. We can all go to the brothel. Watch the footy. Uh, we can get our hair cut. We can drag all of our kids through Bunnings for five hours. You know, on Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Fifteen hundred other people. Uh, yep. But we cut. But, you know, heaven because forbid, we sweat then, when we, we dance, dance and with, and it yeah, goes throughout like, the pause, whatever. It's it's um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's execution by regulation. It, it like the the fairer thing to do would have been to just insist that everyone stay closed and substitute incomes for businesses that would otherwise have been doing it. You know what I mean? Like it's cruel to kind of. I know we all want. It. I think that's that's the irony of it is that we're everybody. Everybody wants the gigs. Everybody wants to hear the music again. Not just the bloody music, like everyone. More mm. than we want to go to Bunnings, people want to go and hear music again and go out and see It people. makes you feel alive socially. and it, 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 I, I have a feeling it's going to be emotional, to yeah. be honest with you. Mm. I mean, I, yeah. I've got friends of mine who've already done it and they're fine, but I don't, I don't know. I, I become very emotionally invested in music and it's terrible. yeah, that's a weird thing. Yeah, man. It's, it's yeah, it's right. like the curse. It's a curse, but the, <laughs> we love it. We love it. We wouldn't do anything else. So fucking emotionally sensitive <laughs> musicians. All right, Mister West, oh, I'll wrap dude. this up. Um, I'll have a chat to Mate. you quickly after this. But yeah, for the sense of uh, keeping this, <laughs> we've already gone past the forty-five minutes. But yeah, uh, Roland West, it's Mate. been a pleasure. Thanks for having me, mate. All good. And um, as soon as the um, start sequence stuff comes, in, I, I will. Yep. Yeah, Sent through to me, and once it come up, we'll we'll do a bit of a feature for it because I'm keen. Yeah, man. Keen as being. Absolutely. Thanks heaps, bro. Cheers, man. Thanks for having me, man. Take it easy. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, that was a fun one. Uh, so that was kind of like drinks with mates. Kind of enjoy that. I'm, I haven't caught up with Roland for some time. Um, if you enjoy that podcast and other ones in the series, please do press the subscribe button and ring the bell so you'll be notified for when more podcasts come live. Um, yeah. Thanks for supporting live music, local music, Australian music. Cheers.